Welcome to the Dream Big, My Friend podcast, where you will find all the inspiration you need to begin living a more intentional life today. Because no matter where you are right now in life, it's never too late to dream big, my friend. And now here's your host, Francis Vitakovic. Hey, before we jump into today's episode, did you know that I've created just for you a massive collection of freebies that includes my Do Something book? It's a no BS guide for anyone who wants to stop wasting their time today. There's also the Fabulous Day Cheat Sheet, the 25 Ways to Make Your Life Instantly Better Guide. I've also included a 12-month habit tracker template, the Abundant Mindset Guide. There's also the fantastic Your Future Self Workbook. It's a workbook designed to bring your future self to life. And finally, the Vent and Move On Workbook. It's a workbook I designed to help you resolve any issue. Right now, all these freebies are sitting inside my secret library, which you can sign up and access for your dreambigmyfriend.com forward slash freebie. That's forward slash freebies. There is honestly so much goodness there. Now it's time to dive into today's episode. Hello, my friends. This is Frances Vitakovic, and you are listening to the Dream Big My Friend podcast. Today's episode, you're probably wondering what's going on. Frances only ever talks about personal development stuff, and here she is speaking about health and weight loss. Now, today's episode, which is all about how to lose 10 pounds with ease, is something that I really wanted to share with you, not only because on this podcast, I love to be authentic. I love to share with you what's going on in my own life. But as I noted on this journey of mine, weight loss isn't just about what you eat. The biggest component is definitely mindset, which is what we're going to be speaking about in today's episode. So let me go back and give you a bit of a backstory. I generally have been pretty slim my whole life. And only as I got older, more specifically, once I reached that age of 40, did I notice that the kilos or the pounds started to pile on a little bit. And this definitely accelerated during lockdown over the past few months when there was definitely a lot more mindless eating involved. Now, I could probably speak about this topic for hours. I've actually just finished recording my 40th video for my course, Mindset and Motivation for Moms to Lose Weight which has been around for a while, but I've just updated all the content, especially now that I've gone through this process again. So it's like the most up-to-date, relevant, constructive, strategic information that will help you keep your mindset in check while you are on this journey. If this is a journey that you need to take. Now, I know that this content's not going to apply for everyone. However, if you do have 10 pounds or more to lose, listen to this episode today because I'm going to try to deliver the most valuable content in a short period of time. And you can always go and check out that extra course that I have, Mindset and Motivation for Moms to Lose Weight, which you can find at inspiring-life.teachable.com. That's where you can actually find all my courses on business, parenting, and personal development. There are at least 40 over there, probably more at this point. But before then, I want to dive into this content. So let's speak about weight loss and how we lose weight. Now, so many of us struggle with this, especially if you're carrying more than 10 pounds, if the weight that you have to lose is a lot higher than this, it can feel like this tremendous battle. But in theory, I think that we all know the secret recipe to losing weight. It's simply eating less and probably moving our body more. But I like to think that it's a food component that's the most important part of weight loss. You need to get your eating in check first because you can exercise for hours. But if you are eating really crappy food, there's a good chance you still won't see the results that you are after. So we know this secret recipe It's not really so secret. It's literally everywhere over the internet. We know that we need to eat less stop overeating and probably move our bodies more than we are currently. But if it's so easy, why aren't people around the world just losing weight with ease? Because there is a missing component that many coaches and health experts fail to address, and it's to do with your mindset. Now, this can be said with any other area of your life. We all have all have the information on how to go and start a really successful business. It's out there on the internet. But that doesn't mean that everyone is going to start a successful business because it's the mindset that's that little hurdle you need to get over. You need to want to achieve those results. You need to have that determination. You need to have that drive. And even though people often think that willpower is like a really important component of weight loss, I actually think that trusting the process and being patient is more important. But do you know what? Even though I've just shared with you this little secret that we all know, 
there's an even more important question to ask you. And it's the one that I had to ask myself. So if you are at a particular weight, if you're sitting at a particular weight and your body is carrying extra fat, extra fat stores on your body, you have to ask yourself the question, how did it happen? Like, how did you get yourself into this position? This is probably the most important question to ask because if you can't acknowledge what has taken you to this point, if you don't have this awareness of the eating habits that led to your weight gain, then you're going to really struggle because you're going to act like, I have no idea why I've put on these kilos. The truth is you probably have a really good idea. You just probably haven't faced the truth. And let's just say for me, I'm going to share with you my own example How I put on five kilos or 12 pounds over the course of lockdown, it's because I started mindlessly eating, not paying attention to my food portions, and also setting up some really bad habits. Like we spent a lot more nights watching movies here with the family. And when we'd sit down to watch a movie, we'd often like get some popcorn out, get some crisps, get some chocolate, get some sweets. It was just a habit. We sort of like assumed if we're going to watch a movie, this is what we're going to be indulging in. Now, there's obviously a difference if you're doing this or once a week or once a fortnight pre-lockdown, like back in my ordinary life versus doing it every night or every second night. It is no surprise to me. Well, actually, that's a lie. I think I was surprised when the weight gain suddenly happened. But when I went back to investigate, it wasn't so much a surprise. Like I could write down a list of reasons why the extra kilos had come on mindless eating, not best habits, a lot more overindulging, a lot more giving into temptation, all those things. And all those things are really called overeating. That's what the bucket they fall into. There's a good chance that in order to get to your particular weight, unless there's a medical underlying medical issue at hand, of course. But other than that, it's usually overeating that leads to extra excess weight gain. So once you acknowledge this in yourself, like you see what has gotten you into trouble. And I ask this question uh, not to be a nitpicky, you know, like, oh, what did you do wrong? But I, this actually would be a great question to ask for any area that you need to work on. Like if your relationship isn't at the best, rather than focusing on, okay, what do I need to do to make a relationship better? Before you do that, you need to see what has gotten you into trouble in this area. Is it a lack of connection, a one-on-one time? Are you just like being really rude and nitpicking and nagging and assuming the worst of your partner? Like think about what has led to that moment in time. And I should say, we need to take ownership of this problem. Like I could have easily played the victim. I could say, okay, I'll tell you all the reasons why I put on weight. For starters, every time my husband would go to the shops, he'd be thinking he's really nice. He's going to bring me back a block of chocolate and I would eat it. So it's his fault. Like I could blame him. If he didn't bring back that chocolate, I wouldn't have eaten it. I could point fingers at everyone else in the family for getting in my way, for trying to sabotage my good intentions. But we're not going to do that. It's all on me and it's all on you. We're adults here, right? I have the choice to say no to anything. I have the choice to walk away. I have the choice to make my own decisions with what I decide to put in my mouth. Even if I'm in a party or social situation where there's food all around me, no one's forcing me to eat it. No one's like shoving a spoon in my mouth saying you've got to have this. They can actually offer it to me, but I still always have the option to say no. So the first step to losing pounds, those extra pounds with ease is acknowledging what got you into trouble. It's usually just overeating. Number two is taking ownership of your choices. You are an adult. You get to decide what you eat. And number three, strategy number three, might not be what you're expecting me to say. You might be thinking, okay, this is where she dives into eating really healthy. But before I did that, I think it's really important to look at the beliefs you have about your body and about weight gain or maintaining a healthy weight. And this was a pretty confronting exercise for me to do because it turns out in my head, I just had this assumption that once you get over 40, you're just going to put on weight. It's normal, especially when you get up to those menopauses. Everyone tells you that your metabolism slows down once you get older. So in my head, I had this idea that weight gain was inevitable. So what did I need to do with this information? I definitely did not need to hold on to it. Now, funnily enough, there are lots of examples in the world, in the community of people who've put on weight over the age of 40 and have kept it on without ever losing it. But Just because they had that belief, it didn't mean that it was 100% true all of the time. I went investigating and I'm not kidding. There are plenty of people 
40, 50, 60, 70, who maintain their normal body weight and they maintain a slim body and haven't, haven't subscribed to this belief that just because you're older, you have to put on weight. So you need to explore these beliefs that you might be holding on to. You might be thinking, well, everyone else is in my family is overweight, so I'm just born to be overweight too. You might be thinking, I can't exercise because I have a sore knee and that means that I'm going to be overweight. You might be thinking that I've given birth not just to two or three babies, I've given birth to four and five babies and everyone knows just how hard it is to lose that baby weight, especially when you've had more than one child. You need to question your beliefs. So first see what beliefs are you holding on to and go and look for evidence to the contrary. Like if you look at some of those celebrities, now I know that they have, like they've got their little fitness trainers and they've got maybe a chef that cooks some meals, but they haven't decided to latch onto this idea that just because you're older, you have to put on weight. And it's not just celebrities. There are plenty of people probably around you that are maintaining a really healthy weight and not believing the same things that you believe. So that third strategy was questioning your beliefs and looking for evidence to the contrary. And now for the next step when it comes to losing pounds with ease, it's just deciding that it's possible for you. It's almost like you need this snap to happen in your brain. It's like, I have had enough. It's when you decide that you are going to treat your body well. It's when you decide that you're no longer going to see food as a source of comfort or entertainment or pleasure. You're going to instead look at it as a source of fuel and how can you nourish your body? It is honestly a decision that you make. And I definitely found it really helpful to have an accountability partner, a partner, a friend of mine that was going through the same journey. We just both decided we've had enough. It's time to lose that 10 pounds. You make a conscious decision. And when you make that decision, you have to honor it. Now, that's not to say that it's going to be easy, but you stick with the process and you are patient without expecting results overnight. Now, I have to be honest, if I was to share everything that I have discovered about this topic, I could probably talk for hours, but let's just see if I can summarize the next few steps really simply so that you walk away from this episode feeling like you can take that first step too. So after that, so once you've made the decision, once you know what beliefs you're holding on to and you're choosing to let it go, you're not playing the part of the victim and you've worked out what got you into trouble, which is normally overeating, you have to come up with a plan. So what's your plan? Now, often the plan is as simple as not overeating. Like you're obviously not going to overeat anymore because if overeating got you into trouble, then eating the right amount or maybe just a little bit less and knowing that your body can always go to your fat stores for extra fuel. I mean, that's what you want your body to be burning. You don't want your body to work hard at just burning all the food that you've consumed. You want it to also turn to the body and burn off some of the fat stores that you have. So for me, once I started this journey, when I made that decision, I decided immediately that I was going to cut out all the rubbish. Like I already knew the moment that I cut out this extra, like all that sugar and processed crappy boxed food, I knew immediately that that was going to curb any extra weight from coming on. Okay, that was already the first step. You cut out, you remove the rubbish and I replaced it with a really healthy, nourishing food. So many vegetables, lots of protein. I found that by having so much protein, it was really easy to keep me feeling full and satisfied. I love fats like um, olive oil and avocados and a handful of nuts. I just kept everything really natural and simple. My meals were simple. Lots of vegetable, lots of fruit, protein, eggs, cheese, all of that real food. And I was so surprised to find that when I had those two, so I would have two big healthy meals. In the morning, I'd have a banana and some strawberries. My lunchtime meal would be a big salad with some protein. I eliminated snacking for the most part, and I'd always have an early dinner. Again, lots of salad. I didn't have any issue with eating potatoes or anything like that. I consider that to be a vegetable. But everything was just a normal portion size, like just eating like a normal human being. And I have to say, it was really hard to begin with. Like it takes time to adjust to a new way of eating, especially if you're looking to minimize flour and sugar, which is what my plan was, minimizing flour and sugar, cutting out all the needless snacking, mindless eating. I was really conscious and intentional with my meal planning and just making sure that I was fueling my body with really healthy, great food. Now, that's not to say that I never experienced any temptation if there was food around that I was used to consuming. 
But I got really good with allowing those urges to come. I didn't resist them and just learning to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. A big part of this is trusting the process, knowing that you're a human who is going to want to sometimes overindulge in food because you've had those bad bad habits set up in the past. But I decided I wasn't going to be using food for comfort and entertainment and pleasure no more. That is like in my our minds, like we have this connection. Oh, if we're bored, we want to eat. If we want, if we're really stressed, we reach for food. You need to look for alternative ways for dealing with those negative emotions. Food should be a source of fuel and it should nourish our body. And I personally found by sticking with this plan, it was definitely really easy to go through every day feeling so full. I personally can't do deprivation and I would never, ever recommend that anyone deprives themselves like to this point where you are feeling really sick or it come, like it could be considered to be starving yourself. You don't need to do that. There is no need for it. If you trust the process, if you trust the process. Now, I know that I'm not a medical expert, so I, I should have probably said that at the beginning, but you can nourish your body with really healthy meals lots of greens, a good size of protein and healthy fats and feel really satisfied. That was my goal. Like I wanted to have my meal and feel satisfied. And what I discovered was because I was satisfied, I found it really easy to get me through the next meal without having to snack in between. And I should probably also note that I found that by default, I was doing some intermittent fasting simply because I was having my meals quite early and I'd have my breakfast around 10 o'clock. So even though those are the nuts and bolts about what I did to lose 10 pounds with ease, I have to remind you the importance of my mindset, having to keep my mindset in check during this process. Because to begin with, like in that first week or two, I can't actually even tell that anything was happening. I often felt like I was just going through the motions and not seeing the results. Like I think so many of us wish that we could see the results really quickly, but I just constantly told myself, you know, I'm doing all the right things. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to trust the process. And I was really surprised like to come to the end of that month and discovered that those 10 pounds were off, but I do not want to underestimate the value and the importance of lots of self-care, self-love, patience without a doubt, and loving yourself on this journey. Because if you have this like self-loathing for your body and the regret about the past, like, oh, I shouldn't have done this in the past. You've got to let that go. Like you are where you are right now and you make a decision moving forward that things are going to be different and that you have the ability to make changes in this area of your life. You definitely do. And I don't care whether you are 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 pounds overweight or even more. We all have the ability to lose weight, to make our health a priority. It's just a decision we make and to nourish it with foods that keep it fueled. And we stop seeing food as the source of entertainment and pleasure and comfort. Okay. It is there to fuel your body, but you have to make that decision. So my friend, I could keep on talking about this forevermore. Like there is so much there to be said about the mindset work that goes with this process that will help support you on this journey. But if you want to know more information, make sure to check out my course, Mindset and Motivation for Mums to Lose Weight which you can find at inspiring-life.teachable.com. Okay, this course goes so deep into all the mindset work. You should come out of that course feeling so strong as if your mindset is unstoppable, like indestructible. We absolutely need to pay attention to our thoughts. We need to stop thinking that weight loss has to be hard, that our bodies can't lose weight. All of those thoughts you are having are holding you back. You need to rewire and retrain your brain to have a different opinion about weight loss and about your ability to lose weight because you can't do it. It has been done before and there is no reason why you can't shed that extra weight if you want to do so and you just want to feel healthier and slimmer. This is a goal that is 100% within your reach, 100%. So my friend, take care. You know, I love and appreciate you all and I can't wait to catch you in the next episode. Until then, dream big, my friend. Thank you so much for listening. If you loved this episode, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you really loved it, you can show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. For more inspiration, head over to dreambigmyfriend.com where you will find even more content for all the dreamers out there.
Until next time, dream big, my friends.